When we were planning all, all of today, and hasn't today been terrific? I want to thank all, I'll, I'll mention them later, I want to thank all of our people who revolted this. It's been great. Um, tons of ideas. Um, new trajectories that just might unleash and liberate new thoughts that could bring some people together in the room in a networking kind of way to do something interesting and creative. I hope that happens. But we wanted something very special to end the day, and uh, we took a risk, and we contacted uh, one of the global greats who's come from these parts, and uh, he said yes. And he did more than say yes, as you're just about to find out. He went way beyond the extra mile for us. Uh, 11 million album sales internationally. Uh, we always call him an export, makes him sound like he's not a human being. It just means, Gary, we're really, really proud of you. Gary Lightbody. Hello. How's everyone doing? Excellent. By the way, it's uh, 13 million. Um, <laughs> I am such a huge fan of TED.com, and I've been watching it for a couple of years now on the, on the net, and I'm so impressed. It impresses me so much that people come up here and they speak with such clarity and erudition about subjects of breathtaking scope, and uh, they do it all without a speech written or notes. <clears throat> Did I say impressed? I meant terrified. Um, I am uh, I'm not a great speaker, so bear with me. Um, please be kind. Uh, I tend to have a very terrible memory. Um, I even forget my own song lyrics. A lot of the time, anyone that's been to see us, the other people that just laughed. <laughs> um, halfway through a song, sometimes I forget a whole chorus. And sometimes if it's a song that people know, they'll sing along. And sometimes if it's a song People don't know, it's just an instrumental. <laughs> We're not renowned for instrumentals. Um, so yeah, I am um, probably not the best person to stand up here with no uh, speech. But uh, um, I now, by the way, have like a little screen down at the, uh, at the bottom of the stage, above my monitor, it's about here, with uh, all the words of the songs when we play live. The only thing that's missing is the little bouncing ball. If I lay here. <laughs> I remember those words, but that's about it. Um, so I thought the best thing for me to do would be just to stand up here and speak from my heart about a subject that, that's very dear to me, uh, which is the Northern Irish music scene um, through the years, but especially the modern Northern Irish music scene, which is um, extraordinary at the moment. Um, in the 15 years or so of peace, um, it has flourished. And uh, one of the things that has helped that nurturing that uh, spur in the music scene has been the infrastructure that has been set up in Northern Ireland through various people with the nerve center in Derry, with whistle for the nerve center there, uh, with the OEM music center in, in, in Belfast, and with various studios and uh, recording, recording studios, rehearsal rooms, and most of all, gigs. There's so many gigs now. When we first started, when I first started going to gigs in Northern Ireland, there wasn't that many uh, gigs, especially not that many from international acts. But now every international act comes to Belfast, and they come here. That's an essential part of their European tour. And sometimes they'll uh, have a guest, a Northern Irish guest, which sort of elevates. Northern Irish music, I think, and can be shown in a spotlight, a great spotlight of uh, basking the international side of things. And for example, Ed Sheeran came uh, here. The last two times Ed Sheeran came to Belfast, he had Foy Vance, the wonderful, wonderful Foy Vance play with him. And then the, last, the very last time he came, he had David C. Clements, so two great Northern, Northern Irish acts. Um, so uh, yeah, it's all different from my day. The only two bands that ever came to Northern Ireland of my day were um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers in 91, who are awesome, and Nirvana in 92. Um, and I was at both those gigs. But now everybody comes to Belfast. This is a really important part of the tour, and that is, uh, that's an extraordinary thing for us. Um, and uh, 
And yeah, back to the, back to the infrastructure and back to the bands. The, 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 the great thing about it is the combination of great talent and great structures for that talent to thrive in. Um, and the talent that we have at the moment is just extraordinary. You know, from Two Door Cinema Club and Cashier Number no. Nine, uh, to the Wonder Villains, to Soak, um, to, you know, so many bands. David C. Clements have already mentioned, Foy Vance have already mentioned, Ian Archer, Duke Special, uh, Ash, of course, one of our great, great legendary bands, been together for 20 years. Speaking of that, um, Snow Patrol next year in 2014 will be together for 20 years. And uh, in all that time, I've never, ever, ever got to wear one of these microphones. <laughs> so thank you to Ted. Ted's real, by the way. He's a real person. He's backstage. Um, so thank you to Ted for that. Um, and I thought, the best, I thought the best way to highlight the great breadth and depth of talent in Northern Ireland right now was to sh let you see it in action. Um, the only way to do that is I got f uh, five of my sort of favorite young bands and artists together and we wrote a song on Monday. Um, and it was a breathtakingly short process as well. It took us two hours and we're going to play it for you today. Um, and it we have Emer and, and Ryan from the Wonder Villains, uh, and Soak, all from Derry. And we've got David C. Clements, and Shauna from Silhouette and Rams Pocket Radio. Uh, and uh, we've, we, we filmed the recording process in the OES yeah Center in, in the Start Together studio. And we thought that uh, it would be like a nice insight into how a song gets made. It's a very brief video, but um, you can sort of see what it's like in the studio. I had a little idea which I sent you and uh, obviously it can go any number of ways but uh, I thought I would sing the first verse. And Brady, if you come in in the second verse. Stubborn but still does shining the back page of a torn you sing the third person. The hard part of these dark days, the hand I'm dealt not to believe. Maybe the first chorus, a few voices, second chorus, a few voices, maybe different voices, and then the third chorus, everybody singing together, and yeah. give it that giant impact. Really, really tug at people's heartstrings yeah. on purpose. This is all that I ask you. Okay, it's all right. <laughs> this sounds <is> good. This is all that I ask I'm harmonizing with the melody as well. This is all I forgot my one. <laughs> this is all. Maybe we could do go down completely to just the guitar. This is all that I ask. This is all. Okay, let's do it again, a couple of times, and I'll count in. Wouldn't it be great on the night if <laughs> I counted in and then we started playing it live on stage? One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. <laughs> from the Wonder Villains. In the spirit of letting music out for joy, we are releasing this song next week on the Snow Patrol website. The name of the band, in keeping with the surroundings, is going to be Gary Lightbody and the Assembly. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And all the money earned from the song, it's going to be 99 pence, but all the money earned from the song will go to the Northern Ireland Music Therapy Trust, so it's a very important cause. So please, from next Wednesday onwards, check snowpatrol.com for that. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Ted, for having us. <laughs>